In this unit, we're going to relate radian measure and the Cartesian plane. So we're going to use the Cartesian plane to evaluate the trigonometric ratios for all angles between 0 and 2 pi. So if we want to recall the unit circle, I'm just going to go ahead and fill it in. Okay, so now let's talk about our unit circle. So for now, ignore all these green values. Um, we're just going to talk about the fact that the radius of the circle is 1, and let's talk about how we got our points. So if we go around the circle, um, we can count it in by pi over 6. Let's count it by pi over 6. Pi over 6, if you recall, is 30 degrees, if you convert it to degrees. So we can count it through every 30 degrees. So here's a good way to figure out um, what the intervals are. So pi over 6, and then 2 pi over 6 is going to give you pi over 3, because it reduces to pi over 3, and that's here. So that's going to be your 60 degrees. So 30 plus 30 is 60. Um, so 2 pi over 3, and then, oh, sorry, 2 pi over 6. Um, 3 pi over 6 reduces to half pi, 90 degrees. Um, 4 pi over 6 reduces to 2 pi over 3. 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6 reduces to pi. 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6 reduces to that. 9 pi over 6, 10 pi over 6, right, divided by half, 11 pi over 6, and 12 pi over 6 is 2 pi. You can do the same thing for pi over 4. So pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, and 8 pi over 4. And similarly, you could do that for every 60 degrees if you wanted to count pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, right? This. Um, okay, so as you can see, um, not so difficult to get your radians onto your Cartesian plane. And um, let's talk about our green values now. So all we have is a circle with radius 1. So you know this point right here is going to be 1, 0. This is going to be 0, 1. And at 180, it's going to be negative 1, 0. And here we have 0, negative 1. So here's a really useful and fun fact. All the coordinates around the circle um, actually correspond to cos theta and sine theta around, uh, depending on what the angle is. So for example, if we look at pi over 6, the cos sine of pi over 6, so the cosine of 30, is actually going to be root 3 over 2. And the sine of 30, or sine of pi over 6, is half. So um, here we have, you're going to get a 45 degree angle. So pi over 4 just means this angle right here is 45 degrees, or pi over 4 degrees. I'm sorry, pi over 4 radians. Um, and the cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. And the sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2 as well, right? That's the, as you notice, these are all our special triangles, so we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, before we get to the actual values, I just wanted to, I'm just going to take it over to the side. Um, if we look at breaking these down into maybe um, transcribing our special triangle onto our Cartesian plane, um, and this would be um, your x value, obviously. This is your y value, and this would be your radius that's consistent throughout. So that's always equal to 1 in this case. Okay, so now just to prove our fun fact, um, let's look at a triangle, and we're going to say this is your x value, this is your y value, and this is your r, which is equal to 1. So I want to come up with all our trig ratios for this, for this triangle. So sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So that's going to be y over r. And since r is equal to 1, it's just y. So that kind of works with what I was saying. Your x, y coordinates, your y value is your sine theta. What about cosine? 
So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's x over r. r in this case is 1, so that's going to give you your x value. And tan theta is going to be opposite over adjacent. And that just means it's equal to sine theta over cos theta, which, if you recall, is one of our trig identities. So this just proves that around the unit circle, your x-y coordinates correspond to the cos of that angle um, and the sine of that angle. Okay, now um, I'm asking you what are the special triangles that can be derived from the unit circle. So when we looked at the unit circle, we looked at 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees, and then obviously um, every 90 degrees. So our 30 degrees, which is pi over 6, complementary angle would be 60 degrees, pi over 3, and our special triangle for that is root 3, 2, and 1. These you should probably memorize. Uh, the other interval that we looked at was 45 degrees. So that's pi over 4, and that's an isosceles triangle, pi over 4 here as well. And that is 1, 1, root 2. Okay, now let's look at, from the unit circle, what trig ra ratios we can determine. So, first one to look at, easy one, um, let's look at pi over 4. So for pi over 4, sine pi over 4, um, we could use either one of these angles, either this one or this one, doesn't really make a difference. We're going to get 1 over root 2. Right, so opposite over or over hypotenuse, and that we can rationalize to root two over two. So when I mean rationalizing, we want to get rid of a root on the denominator, so we're just going to multiply it by root two, multiply the top and bottom by root two, and then we just get root two over two. Um, cosine pi over four will give you adjacent over hypotenuse. Again, doesn't matter which pi over 4 you use. You're going to get 1 over root 2. Same thing. Let's rationalize it. And then tan of pi over 4 will give us 1 over 1, which is 1. Okay, now let's do the same for pi over 3. So 60 degrees. Now we're looking at this angle, that's the angle you're, you're basing it on, so sine pi over 3 would be root 3 over 2, and that's already rationalized because there's no ra radical in the exponent. Cos of pi over 3 would be 1 over 2, and tan of pi over 3 gives you root 3 over 1, which is just root 3. Okay, I'm going to do pi over 6 down here because I don't really have a lot of room. So, sine of pi over 6. So now this is your angle, and it's going to be opposite over adjacent, so 1 over 2. Cos of pi over 6 is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, so root 3 over 2, and tan of pi over 6 is going to give you 1 over root 3. This would be a good time to look back at your unit circle and make sure that all of your quantities match. Okay, so here we have the unit circle again. Let's check our values. The ones we just came up with, we looked at all our special triangles, and they should correspond to these values right here. So now I'm going to show you how to memorize this. Basically, all you really need to know is your special triangles and this side 
this quadrant of the unit circle. Once you have this quadrant, you'll notice that all your x values are just negative here. They're, they're the exact same. They're a mirror reflection. They're just negative. So even your x value from 1 to negative 1, it's just mirrored. And that works just because your x values here are negative. So all your x values here are the same, just negative. Okay, now looking at our third quadrant, your x and y are both negative here. And so both of your values are negative. Looking at your fourth quadrant, your x is positive, but your y is negative. So our x is positive, y is negative, and they're mirrored values. So this angle should match this angle, this angle should match this angle, this angle should match this angle. And it works that way for every single quadrant in the unit circle. If you also recall from grade 11, we learned something called the castrol. So the castrol simply states that in this quadrant, in your fourth quadrant, cosine is positive. And in the first quadrant, everything is positive. Um, second quadrant, sine is positive. And here, tan is positive, which makes sense. It corresponds with what we were just saying, because here everything's positive. Cosine's negative here, that means sine is positive. Tan is positive because we have um, tan is equal to sine over cos, which are both negative, so a negative divided by a negative is a positive. And then here, your cosine is positive because x is positive in this quadrant, and y, your sine is negative. Okay, now let's do an example. We want to determine the exact value of each trigonometric ratio. So exact value just means keep it in radians. And we want to figure out sine of pi over 2. So we know pi over 2 is right here. It's 90 degrees. And uh, I'm just going to draw your circle. What's our point here? 0, 1, right? So sine of pi over 2, if we recall, this is your cosine of pi over 2. This is your sine of pi over 2. So the answer is 1. OK, now let's do another example. Now we want to find the cotangent of 3 pi over 2. OK, so 3 pi over 2 is just 270 degrees. And if we recall, the coordinate there is just 0, negative 1. We also know that the reciprocal of tan is cotangent, right? And so you know that tangent of 3 pi over 2 is equal to sine 3 pi over 2 over cosine 3 pi over 2. So therefore, the cotan of 3 pi over 2 would be the cosine of 3 pi over 2 over the sine of 3 pi over 2. Now we just have to figure out those values. So cosine of 3 pi over 2 is going to be our x coordinate, so 0. And sine of 3, over, 3 pi over 2 is going to be your y, so negative 1. And that just equals 0. OK, so for our next example, we want to determine the exact value of the following trigonometric ratios. So the first one we're looking at is cosine of 5 pi over 4. So I've, I've shown you where pi, 5 pi over 4 is on the unit circle, or on the Cartesian plane. And we know it's going to be 4 pi over 4 is going to be right here, right? That's pi. And um, so 5 pi over 4 is just going to be pi over 4 greater than supposed to be pi over 4. Pi over 4 greater than 4 pi over 4. So let's look at, so if you want, you can actually just draw your, this is pi over 4 right there, and you can just draw your um, special triangle here. 
So you know here you have negative 1, negative 1, and root 2 if you wanted to draw your special triangle right in the grid. I'm just going to redraw it here. So it's 1, 1, root 2, if this is pi over 4. Okay, so we know that cos of 5 pi over 4 is equal to, and we're looking at the adjacent, so negative 1, and that's this negative 1 over root 2. So negative 1 over root 2, if I want to rationalize that, it's just negative root 2 over 2. And it's negative because it's in the third quadrant. Okay, now let's look at this example. We want to find the cosecant of 11 pi over 6. So where is this on our Cartesian plane? We know 12 pi over 6 is 2 pi, so it's going to be pi over 6 less than 2 pi. So it looks like it's in the fourth quadrant. Right there. That is going to be 11 pi over 6. And we know that that's going to be this angle is pi over 6. Here, I didn't want that to be a negative. It's just pi over 6. Um, so we can just transfer our special triangle right onto here. So pi over 6, that means that 30 degrees. This would be root 3. And this would be 2. Your radius is always positive no matter where it is and negative 1 for your y, because it's in the negative y region. And again, good idea to memorize your special triangles so that it's easy to just figure out what, what your values are. Okay, so if we recall, cosecant is just the reciprocal of sine, so it's really 1 over sine 11 pi over 6. Um, so how do we figure this out? What is sine 11 pi over 6? What's the sine of this angle? It's going to be negative 1 half. And so if we work that out, it comes out to negative 2. There you go.